When you think of modern Hollywood greats, one man will always come to mind. It's all-American good guy Tom Hanks. Endearingly ordinary, Tom started his career like many actors with a dream. But unlike most of his peers, his dream came true. In present-day Hollywood, Tom Hanks is one of only a handful of stars who can bring investors flocking to any project he puts his name to. He's earned scores of nominations, won numerous awards, and has starred in some of the highest-grossing films of the last 15 years. He's a bona fide big screen legend, even if he still finds it a little tough to come to terms with the title. I still feel the same way about it as I did when I was in college or I had the, my first equity card in the, my back pocket. It is the most fun that you could possibly have. Uh, uh, it's invigorating. I, I, I feel a little bit more alive, I think, at the knowledge that uh, we're, both of us do, I think. When we, when we know that we have a job and we're going into it, there is nothing that is uh, somehow more exciting. It's never gone away. Not happy with being one of Tinseltown's top leading men, Tom has also found great success as a producer, writer and director of films that straddle many different genres and attract vastly different audiences. From the serious to the absurd, from high drama to family comedy, he's done it all. And unlike many other Hollywood stars, he had no leg up from family members or friends in the industry. Thomas Jeffrey Hanks was born on July the 9th, 1956 in Concord, California. After his parents' divorce, he was bounced from family to family, gaining and losing siblings along the way. A childhood which would have broken some children helped Tom become self-sufficient, resilient and ambitious. His start in acting was far from auspicious. Although he dabbled in performance at school, he was never very successful. At university, he studied theatre, but didn't even get the roles he auditioned for. Rather than give up, Tom took the opportunity to study his craft by going to the theatre and watching shows. Whatever he learned during his time there has certainly stood him in good stead. Even the great Steven Spielberg ranks Tom among the very best. We went to the next tier of uh, contemporary grace, and uh, yet Tom Hanks, when you measure his career up to this point, uh, does measure up to all the golden greats of the past. He is an equal with all those great actors who have been honored since, I believe, 1972. Tom's first success in acting came in the early 80s through the TV show Bosom Buddies. For two seasons, he performed in drag, and his work started to spark the interest of Hollywood movers and shakers. Director Ron Howard, who also started life in comedy performance, recalls what it was about Tom that caught his eye. I always felt like that he was a guy with a great future, even, even, even then. I mean, he was very, very funny in Bosom Buddies. How many people are genuinely funny on, 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 on television? And uh, he wasn't a, even a stand-up comic. He was just he was an actor with great timing. That's what I thought about him first. Later, as I got to know him, I understood his background uh, and his ambition. You know, I wasn't at all surprised to see him begin to develop this great, uh, you know, this great resume of, of work. To Bosom Buddies, Tom landed a role in Splash in 1984, the first of many romantic comedies to come. It was a great success, but Tom still insists he was lucky to land the role. In fact, if you take Tom's word for it, his whole career has been built on a long series of lucky breaks. I can tell you, um, uh, some of the best jobs I had, well, particularly early on, were jobs that no one else would take. So I was very lucky that everybody who turned down Splash had turned down Splash. I was very lucky that Big was a movie that they couldn't set up until, until everybody else had fallen by the wayside, and there I was. I was very fortunate that League of Their Own was a movie that came along, and, and they had to like restructure it, and I was the only guy available that could go out and do it again. So just being hanging around and ready to go off and do the gig, that was, that's, a, that's a substantial amount of it. However, it certainly wasn't all plain sailing. After Splash, he had to wait another few years before landing another hit. It came in the form of Big, a fantasy film that captured a particular zeitgeist in the late 80s. 
In the role of a child suddenly thrown into adulthood, Tom touched the hearts of a whole generation. And the critical and financial success of Big catapulted him onto the Hollywood A-list and turned him into a household name. His next big hit came in 1992 with the baseball film A League of Their Own, which gave him the chance to dig deep. No longer just a romantic comedy star, he really had to stretch his acting muscles and tap into a much wider range of skills. Luckily for him, his talent shone through and he gained more respect from the industry as a serious actor. Well, he's handsome, not too handsome. He's funny, not too funny. He's crazy, not too crazy. He's serious, not too serious. So he understands how to do everything in moderation and make it brilliant. And uh, I've worked with him, I directed him I, in uh, Nothing in Common. I acted with him in League of Their Own. I played ball with him on the Happy Days All-Stars. So, uh, he's just got a quality that everybody likes. Tom then returned to romantic comedies, but with a very different attitude. His performances were more subtle, more real and more human than his earlier work. His old school charisma won female hearts all around the world, when he was paired up with Meg Ryan in Sleepless in Seattle in 1993. He made it look so easy that audiences forgot he was acting and bought into his on-screen characters as an extension of the real Tom Hanks. He even had his co-stars wrapped around his little finger. Yes, I mean, listen, I love all the same things that all the people across the street love about him. You know, he's tall, he's handsome, he's funny and compassionate and I just adore him. Then came Philadelphia a film a million miles away from light-hearted romance. Now he was on screen as a gay lawyer suffering from AIDS, who sues his firm for discrimination. Tom showed total commitment to the role both emotionally and physically, losing 35 pounds for the part. His portrayal was heartbreaking, honest and personal, and the surprise success of such dark subject matter was credited to Tom's incredible performance. It earned him his first Oscar and turned him into a box office heavyweight. But instead of sitting back and lapping up the attention, he continued to challenge himself by branching out into other areas of the filmmaking business. Nineteen ninety four brought with it the box office blockbuster Forrest Gump, a film that showcased Tom's comic timing and went on to become an instant classic, loved by all ages. Next came another box office hit, Apollo thirteen, which reconstructed the ill fated moon mission of the same name. This story, even though it was documented and 30 years old, at the time we made it, was brand new stuff for the vast majority of people who saw it. I think kids saw it differently for the first time. Um, and I think that when they saw it, they saw something that, that was aiming for a degree of authenticity that most movies don't bother with. We specifically said we do not need to make up stuff in order to make this more dramatic or make the jeopardy that the men are under more more scary because what really went on was scary enough and, and, and dramatic enough. Apollo 13 was directed by Ron Howard and Tom played the astronaut and commander James Lovell. He got to work alongside a standout cast including Kevin Bacon, Ed Harris and Bill Paxton. The real Jim Lovell had initially wanted Kevin Costner to play him but he ended up being more than happy with Tom's work. But Hanks was a space enthusiast, a closet astronaut. He really wanted to play a part, and I guess the story I heard, he went to Ron and said, I'd like to be in this movie, and he did a superb job. He managed to capture the, the emotions and everything about that flight that was so important to bring the story across. During the same year, Tom made his debut as an animated character playing Woody in the hugely popular Toy Story would prove to be the first of many voiceover gigs he would score in the years to come. But none of his subsequent trips to the microphone would ever eclipse his first outing as Woody. After Toy Story 2 and Green Mile, he 
He took on the challenging disaster pick Castaway and won a Golden Globe for his portrayal of a FedEx worker stranded alone on a deserted island. It was a grueling... It's not an easy place to make a movie in the tropics with it as hot and as humid as it is. It's, it, it, I think it beat everybody up substantially when we were down there. And even though it was, I think we were five weeks total down in the South Pacific. It's, five weeks in the South Pacific is a nice thing to do if all you have to do is wake up in the morning and decide whether you want to go kayaking or snorkeling that day. But if you actually have to go and make a movie every day, it's hard on you and it's hard on the equipment and it's hard on the body and the psyche. 2001 brought with it more directing and producing credits with the acclaimed HBO miniseries Band of Brothers. The following year, he found more success with The Road to Perdition and Catch Me If You Can, a blockbuster hit in which he starred alongside young heartthrob Leonardo DiCaprio. Meanwhile, he teamed up with his wife Rita Wilson to get behind the independent comedy My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Jumping on board as producers, their big-name firepower helped earn the film some much-needed pre-release publicity, and it went on to become a hit. Tom kept up his heavy schedule of directing, writing and producing, always seeking high-quality drama and comedy projects. More big Hollywood films followed, including Lady Killers, The Polar Express and the highly anticipated The Da Vinci Code. He also produced the kids' film Ant Bully, the story of a child being taught the ways of the world by a colony of ants. Director John A. Davis credits Tom with the film's success. Yeah, we've got an amazing cast, you know, I mean, it's like a who's who's list. So I, uh, I was amazed that we, we started getting them all. Of course, having Tom, you know, Hanks as a producer on the film really kind of helped open some doors and allowed us to get the script to these people. And uh, then, you know, thankfully they liked the script, you know, Nick and Julia and Meryl and Paul and everybody, and Lily. Uh, so uh, it was kind of daunting at first, like, oh my God, I've got to go direct Meryl Streep and Julia Roberts and Nick. But then, you know, you get, you get down to business. In 2007, Tom starred in the Mike Nichols-directed drama Charlie Wilson's War, opposite Julia Roberts. Based on a true story of altruism and politics, he played Charles Wilson, the Democratic Texas congressman. Well, uh, I like Charlie. I think Charlie was, a, Charlie was a brand new mystery. Never heard of him before until I read this book and I was amazed. He was a guy that, that existed in the halls of Congress and and affected world history and we never even heard of them. That's, that's a good secret, that's a good story. Tom remains as busy as ever with a full slate of projects, on many of which he doubles up as producer. On the big budget HBO miniseries drama John Adams, which covered the controversial life of the early US president, Tom confessed that the acting was the easy part. When I visited the set, I always look at the actors and say, well, look, this is work for me. I got to make phone calls and argue about stuff and go in and tell people that they can't do what they want to do. And I beg them to do things that they don't want to do. It's just a drag. And I look over at the actors and they're in their costumes and they're learning their lines and they're interacting and working out bits and stuff like that. And I think they're having all the fun here. Tom recently completed Angels and Demons, the sequel to the blockbuster The Da Vinci Code. And he also produced the incredible Spike Jones children's fantasy, Where the Wild Things Are. Over the years, he's been showered with accolades for his substantial body of work. Among the most important of those is the Lifetime Achievement Award that he received in 2002. Celebrities and film greats arrived at the Kodak Theater in LA to honor Tom and his incredible work in the industry. His success was celebrated by family, friends and colleagues. But his son Colin hinted that Tom was having trouble coming to terms with the lifetime part of the award. I think when, you know, once they changed the Lifetime Achievement Award to like the Life Achievement Award or something like that, as long as it didn't seem like it was past tense, I think he was okay with it. It's easy to celebrate success in retrospect but those who've worked alongside him recognize what unique qualities he brings to every performance. Tom won back-to-back -back Academy Awards for his performances in Philadelphia and Forrest Gump. He has also received a long list of Golden Globes, People's Choice Awards, 
Screen Actors Guild Awards and BAFTA Awards and nominations. But despite all of his success, Tom has always managed to keep both feet on the ground. He's much more comfortable congratulating his peers on their success than talking about his own. He was on hand to support his Philadelphia co-star Denzel Washington when Denzel was awarded the 17th Annual American Cinematheque Award. The best thing about working with Denzel is that it is, it is like a game of, uh, it's like an athletic event in which you're playing with the best in the world and he makes you better. I think all the scenes that I had been lucky enough to have with Denzel, uh, it was a fabulously spirited competition. It was always a, a test of, it was like a great game of catch back and forth with a lot of spin on it. And I think uh, I th I'm a better actor because I worked with Denzel Washington. Tom Hanks has distinguished himself from other Hollywood stars, not only through his performances, but also through the way he carries himself in his everyday life. So far, he's managed to steer clear of any scandal, perhaps because he stays away from the spotlight, preferring to spend quality time with Rita and his children. He is, however, a politically outspoken and passionate man who talks openly about his opinions. He's also a strong supporter of a number of organizations and charities. At the one-year anniversary of the September 11 attacks, he made a public statement about the change that had occurred in the private and public lives of people the world over. A year is not enough time in order to really weigh what the nature of that change is. I think uh, we're in the midst of probably a decades-long adjustment to what has happened to us. It's not going to be any problem. This is not a problem that can be solved or, over or, or compensated for. Uh, in the nature of 365 days, I think that our, that our kids are going to be 15 or 16 or maybe 20 years old um, before the, the, the world comes to a place where it's in its proper perspective. During the writer's strike that rocked the US film and TV industry to its core, Tom, like many other actors, petitioned for writers' rights to fair pay and working conditions. He, along with more than 130 performers, signed a letter urging their peers to uniformly reject the strike authorization vote that had been scheduled. Other actors who signed the letter included Eva Longoria, George Clooney and Edward Norton. The Golden Globes, look, it's a nice party, it's a good thing to have, but it's establishing the, the parameters of just how serious the work stoppage is. Uh, the, the, the entire paradigm of how professional people write and create and deliver stories to the audience that wants to see it is in shift. It's in flux right now. And both sides, and I will, I will, I'll put the onus more on the, the corporate people who own these massive media holdings. You know, not just, it's not just a negotiating that's going on with some producers who are trying to get their movies made. You're talking about, you know, the Rupert Murdochs and the Sumner Redstones of the world. Aware that the writer's cause faced tough and powerful opposition, Tom wasn't giving up the fight. They're the guys that own the whole shebang, and, and from them on down, there has to be a, a bit of a new sensibility that goes in, that takes into the realities of the way people literally watch their stories. It's, it's only 24 hours in the day, man, and, and if they're going to be getting the stories offline or from some other circumstance, or they're going to be giving it away for free, there's got to be a way in order to figure that out. The writer's strike brought to light the huge pay disparities within the industry and caused a massive rift between many performers and those who wrote their scripts. Many television shows were cut short for the season and people lost their jobs. For the Hollywood elite, who had already made a fortune in film, the situation was not as desperate and Tom was aware that he was one of the lucky ones. I'm a very lucky man, and so I don't, I don't have any, any financial worries. The, the things that's really quite, quite a shame is that all, those, all those tradesmen and craftsmen that work you know, paycheck to paycheck, uh, <clears throat> for, uh, when those studios are empty and there's nothing going on on the slot, that, that's why we have, to, we have to get back so that the, uh, the, the industry is literally on its feet and these people don't seriously start having to sacrifice more than they should. Tom supports many different organizations and is very socially aware. As an investor in electric vehicles, he gives money and support to alternative fuels and global awareness of environmental issues. 
He also gives financial support to many democratic politicians and stands up strong in his support of same-sex marriage. He was extremely vocal in his opposition to the controversial Proposition 8, which confined the legal definition of marriage to heterosexual unions. Despite the strong opposition, Proposition 8 passed with 52% of the vote. But even when it comes to making films, Tom is very openly political. He talks about the difference between making films set in the here and now compared to those set in the past. The, the distance really is almost, it's like a comforting, it's like a little buffer. Because this happened so long ago, because everybody's shoulder pads and hair and the, the, uh, the technology is as different as it, as it is, there is almost a comfort of, oh, look at those quaint days back when we were just taking on the Soviet Union, <laughs> as opposed to the, uh, to the, I think, the lesser defined and less comfortable aspects of what uh, the armed conflicts that are going on right now. Unlike many other Hollywood celebrities, Tom's private life has managed to remain just that. He married Samantha Luz in 1978. They divorced 11 years later, after having two children together, Colin and Elizabeth Ann. While he was still married to Samantha, he met Rita on the set of the television show Bosom Buddies. After running into each other years later on the set of another film, their relationship blossomed and they married in 1988. They have two sons, Chester and Truman. Rita and Tom are openly loving and supporting of each other, always at each other's sides throughout award ceremonies and working together on films behind the scenes. What makes who the sex one? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you all my secrets. I, you know what? Have you ever heard that? Have you ever heard that saying? Don't advertise your man. Mm. <laughs> That's the school I come from. Mystery. I think you have to leave I'd it to your imagination. She's saying mystery. Mystery is. That's right. I'm not going to share it with the world. While Rita might prefer to keep her husband all to herself, she surely knows that she'll have to share him with the millions of fans who have grown up with films like Splash, Big. Forrest Gump and Philadelphia. With so many generation-defining films to his credit, Tom Hanks is guaranteed a prominent place in the history of cinema, long after he takes his final bow. Success as a producer, writer and director of films that straddle many different genres and attract vastly different audiences. From the serious to the absurd, from high drama to family comedy, he's done it all. And unlike many other Hollywood stars, he had no leg up from family members or friends in the industry. Thomas Jeffrey Hanks was born on July the 9th in present-day Hollywood. Tom Hanks is one of only a handful of stars who can bring investors flocking to any project he puts his name to. He's earned scores of nominations, won numerous awards, and has starred in some of the highest-grossing films of the last 15 years. He's a bona fide big-screen legend, even if he still finds it a little tough to come to terms with the title. I still feel the same way about it as I did when I was in college or I had the, my first equity card in the, my back pocket. It is the most fun that you could possibly have. Uh, uh, it's invigorating. I, I, I feel a little bit more alive, I think, at the knowledge that uh, we're, both of us do, I think. When we, when we know that we have a job and we're going into it, there is nothing that is uh, somehow more exciting. It's never gone away. Not happy with being one of Tinseltown's top leading men, Tom has also found great success.
When you think of modern Hollywood greats, one man will always come to mind. It's all-American good guy Tom Hanks. Endearingly ordinary, Tom started his career like many actors with a dream. But unlike most of his peers, his dream came true.